This movie serves as a warning to anyone thinking about joining a gym. Okay. Also known as Killer Trainer, which is ridiculous because it completely gives away the ending, but hey, never mind. This is 2018's Blood, Sweat and Lies. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is Melissa and she's the main character. Hi. She's been with this guy Carter for five years. Then this happens. What's my favorite color? Blue. <laughs> Get out. And that's the end of that relationship. Are you serious? Yeah. So after a week of crying and eating cake, Melissa's friend Leslie comes over. They start talking about how hot they were in high school and how all the boys wanted to be with Melissa. Then Leslie's like, right, enough of this. You're coming to the gym with me. No, I hate the gym. Clearly, because here she is at Leslie's gym, Global Fitness. Leslie's having fun singing and dancing on the treadmill, but Melissa doesn't like that, so she goes for the weights. Mm. You doing okay, Mel? How did you know my name? I, uh, I saw your name on the guest list when your friend signed you in. Right. This is Trey, and he's one of the trainers here at Global Fitness. He's like, how about a PT session free of charge? And she's like, okay, thanks. So that's happening. Then Leslie comes over. OMG. Oh, who is that? He's a trainer. Leslie's like, OMG, you should probably start having sex with him. And Melissa's like, no, I can't. The session is just her doing nothing while he stares at her, shouting stuff like, you got this in her face. But she obviously liked it because she signed up for a membership and a personal training package with Trey. The next day, we see Melissa at work. She owns an art gallery. Yes, of course. No one in these movies has a real job. They always run some sort of doomed to fail creative nonsense. Yep. Anyway, who's this cool customer? Do you see anything you like? Absolutely. <laughs> this is Adam, and he's pretty keen on Melissa. It's a nice piece. Yeah. In fairness, all the other pieces in this gallery look like they've been done by children with learning difficulties. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Who is going to buy that? Anyway, back at the gym, Trey's doing Melissa's assessment and wants to take a photo. Melissa's like, why do you need that? It better not be going on social media. And he's like, no, don't worry. It's for a before and after. I'm just going to keep it in my drawer. And she's like, okay. Trey asks her what her fitness goal is, and she tells him she wants to be able to do a muscle-up. It's a very epic move. Yeah. He's like, I reckon you'll be able to do one in six weeks. Then the film shoehorns in the fact that Melissa is scared of heights. Okay. After the session, Trey gives her a fitness tracker. This tracks your calories, your sleeping pattern, how much you walk. If you give me your phone, I can set it up for you. So Trey takes her phone into his office and somehow links it to his. As Melissa leaves, she sees Leslie coming in. And Leslie's like, I've seen some men in here you might like. How about that guy, Mark? He works in marketing. Mark and marketing? Like Trey and training. <laughs> Ooh, he doesn't like that. He's like, Melissa needs to focus on her fitness, not hooking up with men. Later, we see what Trey eats. Leaves with a sprinkle of protein powder. That doesn't look good. The next day at training, Melissa's complaining about her ex, Carter. It turns out that not only did he not know her favorite color, but he didn't even know she was afraid of heights. I have an idea. So Trey takes Melissa next door to conquer her fears on this climbing wall. Leslie comes in and she's like, stop it, Trey. This is really dangerous. She could die. I don't see how. But Trey's like, whatever. I believe in Melissa. You don't. And Melissa makes it to the top. Yeah. When they leave, Leslie's like, sorry about that. I just worry about you. Later at the art gallery, Adam has come back. He asked Melissa out on a date on Saturday and she agrees. Cut to the date and Melissa is complaining about her ex. He thought my favorite color was blue. Mm. What? This again? Are you fucking eight years old? Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyway, the date goes well and Adam takes her back to her house. But oh no, Trey is spying on them from his car. The next day at the gallery... I'm stalking you. Oh my gosh. No, not really. He's just there to invite himself over to a house after work. Adam's tall, ripped, handsome, good at cooking, really respects women. And? And he's into art. The perfect man for Melissa. So they start kissing and then they bang. Meanwhile, Trey is at home alone watching Melissa's heart rate go up. And he knows what that means. Yes. Although we don't see Trey knocking one out over the thought of Melissa getting pumped, it's certainly implied. The next morning, Melissa's running late for a training session. Hey. Uh, Trey, 
What are you doing here? He's like, well, you were late, so I thought I'd come and fetch you. She's left her phone inside, so Adam comes out with it. Trey can now see how small he is compared to Adam, and he's raging. At the gym, Melissa can't stop talking about Adam. She goes on and on and on. And Trey hates it. So he puts something in her water to make her pass out. Welcome back, beautiful. She's woken up in his office and he starts touching her inappropriately. It's totally inappropriate. Yes. Later at Leslie's house, Melissa says she's worried that Adam hasn't called for ages. Leslie's like, I'm sure he will. Men love you. Remember that weird fat guy from college? And Melissa's like, who? Leslie's like, you know, the one who used to leave heart-shaped notes under your door every day. But Melissa has no idea who she's talking about. I can't believe you don't remember his name. The next day at the gym, Melissa asks Trey to put her phone away for her. While he's doing that, he sees a message from Adam come up. He replies to it by telling him to meet her at the gym at 5.30 in the morning tomorrow for a workout, then blocks his number. The next morning, Adam turns up at the gym. Obviously, Melissa's not there, so Trey starts showing off and going on about how much he loves the gym. <sighs> okay. You want to do a superset? Why not? Trey offers to spot Adam during his super set, but he doesn't. Instead, he grabs Adam's phone and blocks Melissa's number, and Adam almost hurts himself. Oh, no! Adam's like, why didn't you take the bar? And Trey's like, sorry, I didn't hear you over the music. Bullshit. When Melissa arrives, Trey starts teaching her some self-defense move, but it's clearly just an excuse to touch her, and Melissa feels uncomfortable. He's a creep. Later, she tries to call Adam, but she can't get through, because Trey blocked her number, remember? Yes. The next morning, Melissa comes in to tell Trey she needs some time away from the gym. He's like, okay, let's just do a quick weigh-in. And oh no, Melissa's put a pound on. What? Yeah. And Trey is furious. Ooh. Have you been taking the supplements I gave you? It's a pound. It's a shortcoming. I'm gonna go. When she tries to leave, Trey gets aggressive and tries to stop her, but she's leaving anyway. Later, she finds out that someone's trashed her gallery and she cries. The next morning, Carter has turned up at her house to collect some of his things. He's like, tell your new psycho boyfriend to stop texting me. And she's like, what? He's like, yeah, I've had a load of threatening messages telling me to stay away from you. Luckily, Melissa can find out who sent these messages because Leslie is a tech genius. And look at those messages. Wow. Melissa's like, what number were those sent from? Yours. Leslie's like, could this be Trey from the gym? And Melissa's like, well, he has been a bit weird recently. So Leslie's going to do some investigation. Cut to Trey who's holding up a massive T-shirt, remembering how at school he used to be fat. And all the kids used to call him Lunch Trey. <laughs> Leslie comes into the gym to snoop around, but Lunch Trey's there too. And he makes sure he's the only person in the gym with her. Trey... Is the lunch tray? Yeah. <gasps> Normally, these photos are awful, but I reckon this one's pretty good. I'm not sure if it's photoshopped, if it's just a photo of a random fat person, but I usually expect something like this. Anyway, Melissa can't get hold of Leslie, so she removes her fitness tracker, suspecting something's up. When lunch tray sees that he's no longer able to monitor her, he's livid. Unable to get hold of Melissa, thanks to lunch tray, Adam goes round to the gallery. Melissa? Hey, Melissa? Melissa goes over to the gym and finds Leslie stuffed in a locker. She goes to call the police, but oh no, lunch tray is coming. He sees the phone off the hook and knows Melissa has been in there. After a bit of cat and mouse, Melissa sees Adam tied up. Lunch tray comes out and he's like, finally, we're going to be together. It was impossible in college because I was fat, but now I'm not. Melissa objects, but lunch tray's not having any of it. He's like, I'll need to kill Adam first. Never. <laughs> She runs away and thinks, ooh, I'll hide on the muscle-up bar. He'll never think to look up here. How has he not seen her? No idea, but he hasn't. Uh, fall for me now. Yeah. So lunch tray is choked out and Melissa rescues Adam. But oh, no. No. <laughs> lunch tray jumps on Melissa and starts telling her what he's going to do to her. But then... At an unspecified time later, we see Melissa and Leslie walking around the gallery that's as good as new. And oh, look, Adam's here too. They're together now, yeah. Some mail has arrived for Melissa. What is this? Don't freak out. It's an everyday thing. Yeah, so lunch tray is serving five years in prison, and he's gone back to making notes on hearts and sending them to Melissa. You're not concerned? Not in the least. Right. And that's the end of the film. 
So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.